Good day guys, today I will attempt to polish my rusty old axe here entirely by hand, no power tools whatsoever. So what I will be using uh, will be a coarse emery cloth, then I will jump to medium emery cloth, fine emery cloth, then I'll be using uh, 300, 320 grit um, wet dry sandpaper. This is uh, this is all automotive sandpaper and you could uh, get that at your uh, local automotive store. So after I do the, uh, the 320 grit wet dry sandpaper, then I'll jump to 600 grit, then 1500 grit, then 2500 grit, then 4000 grit, 10,000 grit, or sorry, 8000 grit and then 10,000 grit. Then I will use metal polish. Okay, I said that you can get this sandpaper here at your uh, local uh, automotive store, but uh, the highest grit that you will usually find at your automotive store will be 2,500 grit. Usually that's going to be the finest grit uh, they carry. So in the description below I will put where you can get the Spiner Grit sandpaper here. I, I got this at uh, sandpaper.ca uh, and again this is 4000 grit, 8000 grit and then 10,000 grit. Uh, this here, the metal polish, you can get that at uh, uh, your um, local automotive dealer. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start with uh, my coarse grit emery cloth. <clears throat> and as a lubricant, I'm going to use WD 40. Alright, it's taking a long time to sand off all these dimples here, so I'm going to be using a file. It's not a power tool, so I guess it's not cheating, right? Okay, while I have the file still in my hand, I might as well sharpen this axe at the same time. Okay, I think I'm all done using the file now, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue using the emery cloth. I like using a little bit of WD-40 and uh, I'm going to use a piece of uh, one inch pipe here. Let's just make things easier. Okay, I have a piece of inch and a half ABS pipe this time. And, uh, it's a, a little easier to hold on to. So I like to change my scratch pattern, right? I'd like to go on a, on a 45 degree here or so.
Then I change my scratch pattern. Go this way for a while. All right guys, it's, it's coming along pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure how long I've been hand sanding this. Over an hour, I would say, uh, and that's only one face. There's there's three more sides to do, and and I'm not done yet. And I'm not sure if you can see the, this on camera, but there's still a lot of pitting visible. Now, you know, it's not that visible. It's not that much of a big deal. But once I go to the finer grit, let's say uh, 2,000 grit, 4,000 grit. These pittings here, they're gonna pop out like a sore thumb. So I gotta keep on sanding with the coarse grit until these pittings here are completely gone. And then, and only then, can I go to the finer grits. Now you can see my sandpaper here, it's all worn out. It's worn out here, so I got some fresh grit here. So I'm gonna use this part here to keep on sanding. Okay, I can see there's a little bit of pitting just ever so slightly. So, you know, I've been sanding for about an hour and a half and this axe was in pretty good condition on top of that. So just to show you how much work there is to do. So these little pinholes there, they have to be removed. So I got to keep on sanding maybe another half hour or so. All right guys, that's it. I don't see any more pittings whatsoever. So um, I am done with the coarse grit sandpaper. So I didn't really keep track of time, but I would estimate that I've been sanding for about two hours. Uh, I guess I sanded for about half an hour the other day and maybe an hour and a half today. So I got uh, one, two, three, four more sides to do. So, <laughs> and maybe another six hours of sanding. And that's only for the coarse grit, but uh, when I jump to the other grits, like the, me the medium uh, hemory cloth and the fine hemory cloth and the 320 grit and so on, it's gonna go much, much faster because I don't have to worry about removing all the pittings because the pitting is all gone. All I have to do is worry about removing the scratch marks from the coarser grit, which will be much, much faster. So anyways, this will be a long, boring day today. Okay, this side is done here with the coarse uh, sandpaper. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There's like a micro crack. It doesn't even look like a crack. It looks like an indentation, but I've been sanding away for like 20 minutes and uh, it's still the same. So it's gotta be a micro crack. It's pretty interesting. All right, so I got uh, three more sides to go. Okay, this is the other side of the axe. I've been spending over an hour sanding this side here. And right here, I've got some pitting that is so hard to make disappear. First of all, this section of the axe right here has been uh, quenched. So the steel is much harder and it's much harder to sand. And I've concentrated of sanding here for the last half hour for sure. And I could still see some pitting and it's gotta go because once this axe is like a mirror polish, these uh, these pits are gonna stick out like a sore thumb. 
So I'm going to put new sandpaper off and so I can get maximum grinding so it so it sand much quicker. Okay guys, I'm done the the entire axe. It's all done now with the coarse uh, emery cloth. Now I'm going to jump to the uh, the medium emery cloth. Um, so far I spent almost eight hours of hand sanding and this axe was in pretty good shape so if you have a really old really rusty axe very pitted I suggest you don't do it by hand because you're going to be sanding for a week anyways now that all the, the pitting is all removed all the rust is removed uh, we're all down to nice bare metal the rest is going to be much easier. I'm going to apply much less pressure. It's going to go much faster. I probably estimate now to go through all the grits, maybe another eight hours of work. I'm not sure, but I, I will let you know. Okay, now we're going to do with the fine emery cloth. Okay, I'm all done with the fine emery cloth. Now I'm using a wet dry automotive sandpaper, 320 grit. Now we're gonna start to see really nice results. Okay, 600 grit. Okay, I'm just uh, finishing it off here with the uh, 600 grit and I've noticed there's some little uh, pinholes here just uh, It's slightly slightly pitted right just only right here and you probably can't see it on, on camera And I've only seen that once I got into the 600 grit um, When you go into the higher grits, that's often when you discover you didn't do a good job in the previous grit but uh, so far that's the only place I've seen some uh, pits there, it's, it's only right here. So what I'm going to do is go back, this section here only, go back to the 320 grit and then I'll finish it off, it off with the 600 grit. Okay, I think the pitting is all gone now, so let's let's try it back with the 600 grit. Perfect, it's all gone now. Okay, I'm all done with the 600 grit. Now I'm going to the 1500 grit. So from 600 grit to 1500 grit, it's a pretty big jump, but that's all I have. So I'm just that means I'm just going to have to spend more time on the 1500 grit. Uh, right now there's just starting to be like a, a small shine on the axe. After I'm finished with the 1500 grit it, it should look pretty good. So every time I change the grit I sand this way here for maybe five minutes or so and then I'll sand this way for another five minutes. Okay I'm all done sanding here with the 1500 grit so there's definitely a shine to it now. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera but there's a uh, there's just a little bit of pitting right here Anyways, I'm just going to leave it. There's just way too much work to, to go back and fix that. I don't want to start going back down to 320 grit. There's just too much work. Plus, I mean, when I sharpen the axe, if I decide to sharpen the axe after, I can get rid of these uh, the pitting here after anyways. Okay, next step is uh, 2500 grit.
Okay, after the 2500 grit, now we're going to do 4000 grit. I'm going to do circular motion now from now on. Okay, I'm done with the 4000 grit, so you can see, start to see my reflection in the axe. Surprisingly, I can still see all the, uh, the scratch lines caused by the uh, 4000 grit. Uh, but anyways, now I'm moving on to 8000 grit. Okay, so I'm all done with the 8000 grit. Yeah, the camera's got a hard time focusing, it's too shiny I guess. You can see the, the reflection of the can of WD-40. But we can still see the scratch line uh, caused by the 8000 grit sandpaper. Now we're going to go to 10,000 grit, I'm not sure what kind of difference it's going to make. I've never had 10,000 grit sandpaper before, but I have it so let's use it. Alright, so this is what it looks like after 10,000 grit. It's not bad, but uh, it could be shinier. I, I want to bring the sacks to a mirror polish and it's not quite there yet. Alright, so we're going to do this. Now the next step is going to be the, uh, what's this called, mag and aluminum polish so it's uh, uh, you can call it metal polish and we're going to use a clean rag and, and rub it on the axe and that should make a big difference Alright, there you go guys, I'm all done. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I can make it perfect if I use my uh, buffing wheel, but then that would be cheating, right? Because it's a power tool. This video is about how to polish an axe without power tools. So I'll show you all around. There's still some scratch lines that are visible here, but like I said, I could use my buffer uh, with the buffing wheel there and take that out easily. But uh, we'll just leave it like that for now.
And um, using this method, using fine grit sandpaper, you can polish almost anything, including wood. And this is my pile of sandpaper. I could probably use more uh, metal polish and, you know, maybe spend another hour polish it even more, but it's almost 11 p.m. right now. I started uh, sanding by hand around 8.30 this morning. Took a few breaks during the day, but still a very long day. So <laughs> I'm gonna call it quits for today. Um, if you would like me to make a handle for this axe uh, without using power tools, uh, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.